my university wanted to start a Native American Studies Center. Um, they basically changed the protocols to gain access to the collection and, and access to any of the collections. And that protocol read like a list. There were a couple other things that were bubbling away during this September 20, winter of 2020 to 2021. And of course, you know, we get COVID around that time too. And um, <clears throat> so a couple of things that ended up happening um, beyond the book was that um, I had a colleague, uh, another person, a professor in the department who put out a, uh, an email on the listserv that basically said that graduate students should use this, uh, this database called Cite Black Authors to make sure that they cite black authors for citational justice. And I sent a reply to that, very polite. And I said, you know, I know this is well-intentioned. However, I recommend that students cite the authors who did the best work, regardless of their skin color. Something along those lines, right? Very controversial. Yes. So that was another thing that uh, people were upset about. And then um, I had, I went to a, um, a webinar for my university wanted to start a Native American Studies Center. And so I went to the webinar and the speakers were, they, they were saying things that I would consider racist. For example, they said that um, in, a, in a Native American Studies Center, you should not if at all possible, you should not have a Hispanics at, in the office. Be what? Yeah, because those Hispanics, who, like a secretary, because they may be mistaken for Native American or vice versa. Oh, my right? God. And so I, you know, I said, well, you know, why would that be bad if a, Native, if a Hispanic is mistaken for Native <laughs> American or if a Native American, or if a, um, or, or vice versa, or if a Native American is mistaken for Hispanic. It's only bad if you think there's something wrong with being Hispanic. If you think there's something wrong with being Mexican, then it might be bad. But if you don't think there's anything wrong with Mexicans, it's not bad. Just like I have reddish hair. If somebody mistakes me for an Irish person, I'm not, it doesn't upset me. Why would it? <laughs> right? It would only upset me if I think that there's something wrong with being Irish. Right. So Common I, sense opinion. <laughs> and so this was this um, ended up entailing a, a call from my chair telling me that I shouldn't attend such events, that these were echo chambers, and that he, although he agreed with me, he said, um, he, he thought I shouldn't attend them. And he said, um, he basically said, you know, it could hurt the chances of the junior faculty the junior faculty's chances for tenure and promotion. And I said, I didn't believe that. Um, and he's like, well, how would you feel if you were a junior faculty and this kind of controversy would come up? And I told him, I said, I would hope that I would be the type of faculty at any time in my career that would support people's freedom of speech and academic freedom. Yes. You know, so that kind of passed. And then... Two other things happened. This is like a laundry list. Oh, my God. <laughs> and this is not even the, the most recent. Right? Two other things happened. Can I say one thing uh -huh. before you say it? I just want to keep everyone out there. We are going to talk all about your actual research today as yes. well and go through some cool history and stuff. I wanted to make sure at the beginning here you got to outline all this bullshit that has happened to okay. you so that we get that on the table. But Absolutely. please continue. Um, so another the other things that happened was I wrote an op-ed for the Mercury News, which is the Bay Area's newspaper, main newspaper, I should say, about the new laws for reburying bones, the CalNAG Press new laws. Um, so the California Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act. And um, I said that CalNAGPRA was like the federal law, NAGPRA, but on steroids because the position is that if there's a different disagreement between the Native Americans' perspective and the scientists' perspective, you have to give deference to the Native Americans. 
And so it's not a balance. It's not a preponderance of evidence. It's basically, so what is the whole point of, of even debating anything then? If you're just going to say, well, you are always wrong if you disagree with the other group. That's and the problem. So, yeah. And so this, and so when this uh, op-ed came out, I had like a huge number of tweets about it, like negative tweets about it um, from what I would call the pro-repatriation uh, group. And um, it's kind of interesting. Um, most of the tweets were very personal attacks. A lot of them were like, oh, you're a grave robber, a ghoul, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, things like that. Um, and then I posted a photo not too long afterwards. Um, so what happened? What happened was... We got, of course, everybody had to leave the campus when, um, when COVID hit, right? <clears throat> and what happened was then we got to go back. And when I went back, I went into the curation facility that holds the skeletal remains to, presume, to resume my work. And when I got back after, I think it was was it maybe 17 months or something? It was like some crazy length of time yeah. that we were gone, right? Um, I was so happy to be back doing work. <laughs> and like one of the things is that I really love the study of anatomy, the study of skeletal remains. I, it, it brings me joy. And so I was curating the collection, taking care of the collection, in the sense of making sure that you know the boxes were um, were intact, the bags were good, that the the bones were taken care of, and I opened one of the boxes, and there was one of the individuals that I had many times seen when I've done research, and I held the skull and I thought, wow, I'm so happy to be back here, and so I took a photo, and I. Um, I tweeted that photo and I said, so happy to be back with old friends. <laughs> and that like exploded. And the, um, that picture. the, and the um, provost basically, you know, called it disgusting. He said, oh, why was I holding the bones without gloves? Well, actually the National P uh, Park Service even, which is like one of the largest, uh, larger largest employers of archaeologists says that you shouldn't use gloves unless you unless like it's in a crime setting or something right mm. because of course if you have gloves on you're more likely to drop the remains right you, ah. so you're better off not holding it with gloves you're better off holding it barehanded didn't know that this is common practice you can google photos of anthropologists with skulls, you'll see lots of them with gloves and lots of them without gloves. It's not unusual at all, but they made a big deal about it. And basically then the president, um, the president decided that she was going to change the protocols to, um, change the protocols to access. And I was a curator of the collection, so that means I get was the one to take care of them. And she basically removed me from that post. And um, she removed me from that post. And then she cha they changed the locks. They literally changed the locks of a curation facility, like in the middle. So you that. couldn't even go in. Yeah. And, Do we have that picture, Alessi? Uh, I think I saw it. It's that one, that first one. This is yeah. it? Uh, that, yeah. That one. That's so happy what caused the was, huge yes. outrage. Yeah. God, people have too much time on their hands. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. That's and, crazy. And so, and like anybody who looks at that picture honestly can see that that's a sincere smile. There's nothing. Of course. <laughs> that's not fake. What's the, other, am, what's the other one right here? Oh, the other one is a photo that actually the university had used for their promotional materials for years. So they weren't upset no about that one. had ups, no problem with that one or the, the other thing. one. Yeah. yeah. So, in a sense, they only started having problems with it when they, after the book was published. And there's, you know, 
the one below that too, where I'm holding it. Uh, I have my um. No, over here, Alessia, on, on the, the right side. On the right side. On the right side, right all the way. No, oh, no, oh, down. Right. No, no, no. no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, that well, one. Well, the one, the big one. Not, yeah, not the that one. one. That yeah. one. Yeah. That one too, used in promotional materials for the university. Same picture, right? <laughs> I mean, wow. And so basically, um, and because all this was happening, um, I, w I started to be concerned that I would lose my job. Of course. <laughs> um, and throughout the whole thing, I was always, I, I was always civil. I was always, you know, I always reached out to people to, uh, to say, you know, let's talk about this and try to, um, you know, basically be, be in a way, uh, talk about it in a manner that is a civil manner to help people understand that the big reason why people were attacking me was not because of the photo, but because of the book yep. and, and the op-ed. Nevertheless, um, they basically changed the protocols to gain access to the collection and, and access to any of the collections. And that protocol read like a list of everything I hate. Um, so, for example, um, you know, you have to wear gloves. And if your glove is torn, you have to wear and you have to put on a new glove. You have to wear a mask. For what? For what? I mean, we're not going to give them, not going to give them COVID. Right? Oh um, my God! But then, even more ridiculously, like you cannot take photos. You cannot take photos of the boxes in which the bones are in. So you know, even if you do, the box closed, you can't take. Yeah. What about for record keeping purposes? Yeah. So no more photos, and then. Um, unbelievably, they decided to also have some behavioral um, guidance that says you cannot cuss, you, you have to wear appropriate attire. And everybody knows when you say appropriate attire, you're talking about telling women what to wear. You're not talking about, you know, like, <laughs> so what, you can't go in there with shorts or a v-neck, is a v-neck too risque to deal with bones. The bones are going to be very, very offended, you know? Yeah. And then top it off that um, they s had a protocol that said um, menstruating personnel, they didn't even use the word women, um, are not allowed in the curation facility or to handle bones. Oh, my God. And so when all this was happening, I had, um, I basically had contacted uh, Pacific Legal Foundation to get some legal help. And they basically helped me assume my university. There were other aspects, such as in the summer, um, before we, re I think it was before we returned, but I, sometimes timing is difficult when there's so much. Right. Um, um, my chair, hosted by my dean, had uh, held a talk, a webinar talk, on what to do when your tenured colleague has been branded a racist. <laughs> and they then changed the name. They, my chair then went ahead and told, you know, the whole story from his perspective, and um, but changed my name so that people wouldn't be able to figure out. I'm the only person studying skeletal remains at San Jose State. So, and it's a small department. So anybody could have figured it out, like w within five seconds of a Google search. 